But, pupunta tayo sa speech muna ni Duterte. So, meron tayong short video dito na kung saan para ito na lang. Dito tayo sa shorts. Alright? Okay, so this is Duterte's speech. Na sinasabi niya na drug addict daw si uh, President. Kailangan ay What? So, sinasabi niya doon, ang bisyo daw ni PBBM. Alright. At ang hinang, ang hinang audio. All right, medyo mahina yung audio nun, so let's go back here. Bangagyan. What a thing That's to say. Medyo, medyo may anxiety dun eh. Ito si uh, Atorne Panelo. He's my former professor. Uh, si Bongo. At kung sino-sino pa. Bangag daw ang presidente natin. All right. So sinabi yon ni Duterte, my drug addict tayo yung president, and that's exactly our headline here. Duterte calls PBBM bangag, claims he's a drug addict, then warns him of ouster like his late dictator father. So sabi niya dito, accusing the Marcoses of seeking to perpetuate. Their power, Duterte targeted President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos, branding him as bangag, a derogatory term in Filipino suggesting drug use or addiction. But he did not just suggest, he actually claimed that uh, President Marcos is a drug addict and we have a drug addict as president, as he said. So that is rich coming from someone who was accused of being, you know, the lord of all, all drug lords in southern Philippines by his ex-DDS trusted aid na si uh, Arturo Lascanias, di ba? Di ba? So, all of them are al- alleging, you know, things. Although sinasabi niya na alam daw ng militar yan. Of course, alam din ng militar tungkol sa kwento ng mga Duterte. So, may, kung may intel sila about about uh, PBBM, at they are using this pulveron scandal or tactic to target the president. And I'm not all right, I am not defending PBBM here. All right, I'm just saying that all of them are making allegations. All right, to my allegations, God, just prove it. So w- why try to use your platform and he put mo siya sa spotlight? Just provide evidence, di ba? Pero yung, yung pagiging drug addict ni PBBM, I'm good with that. Basta ayaw ko lang ang isa pang Duterte sa power because we, we've had a Duterte as president at nalaman natin na hindi siya hindi maganda yung resulta ng isang uh, Rodrigo Duterte as president. So for example, let me give you examples why Rodrigo Duterte was one of our worst presidents ever. All right? One thing is the fact that nung umalis siya, doble yung kanyang dinoble niya yung utang natin. All right? From 6. Point, or 5. Point, more or less 6 trillion pag alis ni uh, former president Ninoy Aquino, Noy Noy Aquino. In fact, binay- nagbayad pa nga siya ng 1 trillion, di ba? Nung pag-alis niya. I, and hindi rin ako uh, Aquino supporter. In fact, when when Aquino was president, I was a critic. But anyways, pag-alis niya, more or less 6 trillion yung utang natin. Nung dumating si Duterte, umutang siya 6.7 by my count. More or less 6.7 trillion yung kanyang kan- kan- dinagdag. So, kumbaga, more than uh, more than pa yung combined uh, debt o inutang ng lahat ng presidente natin, yung inutang ni Duterte lang sa kanyang six-year presidency. So imagine mo, imagine niyo yung 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 automatic na uh, ano to, na bayad natin sa pay, cred, payment natin sa credit. Ilang billion yan, ilang daang billion yan. Just to cover yung inutang ni Duterte na six trillion pesos. Alright? Yung interest, sabi natin interest 3% o sabi natin 1% yung interest niya. So, Ang laki, di ba? Malaki pa rin yan. Yung, yung 
interest ng kanyang utang, eh pwede, pwede nang, yung inutang lang, I'm not speaking of the whole 14 trillion debt, kasi sabi nila, 14 trillion na utang ng Pilipinas, diba? Yung inutang pa lang ni uh, Duterte, sobrang laki na. Kung chichak natin yung kanyang interest, di ba? Siguro, more or less 100 billion pesos. And ang, ang daming, ang daming ng project siya na magagawa yung, ang dami, mga schools and all that shit, di ba? Isa pa, when he was president, he used, he weaponized the DOJ and all the levers of the government against his critics. For example, one, um, he weaponized the Bucor and he, the, the DOJ as well. The DOJ used ex-convicts and convicts to go after a sitting senator, Laila Dilima. Diba? That's corruption. That's political corruption. That's, I mean, to go after your political opponents, diba? okay, using bogus, bogus witnesses. At yan ngayon yung, yung iniiyak ni Kibuloy na, ah, okay, Riza Ontiveros is using bogus witnesses. Bogus witnesses? Are you kidding me? Kasi nga, yung case ni Kibuloy naman kasi, na-dismiss naman talaga ng mga Davao prosecutors noong 2019. Ano yung expect mo, di ba? Alright? Davao City prosecutors. Eh, si Kibuloy, ganun sila ni, ni Digong. Alright? So what do you expect talaga? Talagang expected na mababasura yung kaso ng mga accusers ni Kibuloy. So going back kay Duterte, another reason, yung kanyang drug war na failure, unang-una pa lang since 2016, sinabi ko na, and I have this Facebook page, na mas mauna pa dito sa da- The Daily Medicine Facebook page, na his drug war is going to fail miserably. And I was right. Kasi nga, walang lahat, pati yung drug war sa US. Di ba? And ngayon, meron na siyang, dahil nag-fail yung kanyang drug war, he created a new war. And his new war is this war against communism, against APP NPA. Despite the fact that when he was a mayor in the vow and then he became president in 2016, he was a communist cuddler. Alright? Communist cuddler siya, di ba? Gusto pa niyang bigyan ng uh, cabinet position si Joe Masison at ang ibang leaders ng uh, CPP NPA. At ayaw niyang tawaging enemy ang mga CPP NPA. At tinulungan pa siya ng CPP NPA. At gusto pa ng CPP NPA na itulungan siya sa pag, pagpuksa ng, drug, ng drugs sa Pilipinas. Despite the fact that according to Arturo Las Canas, eh, si Duterte daw ay drug lord. Lord of all drug lords. So, itong mga to, allegations to, pero meron din nag Okay, let's, okay, huwag tayong magkaroon ng double standard. If Duterte can accuse, alright, President Marcos of being a drug addict, and I can accept that, alright, that, that's still a lesser evil compared, compared to Duterte. Then, Let's look at the allegations against Duterte as well, being being the lord of all drug lords in Southern Mindanao, and his son, Paulo Duterte, all right? Uh, the congressman in Davao who got 51 billion in unaccounted funds, all right? Ano to? Unprogrammed funds daw. 51 billion in just span of three years. Saan sa mo dadali yung 51 billion? Isa ka lang na ako eh, na congressman. So, uh, di ba sabi nga nila, zero-sum game ang laban ng pagdating sa budget. Kasi kung may mas malaking budget, may ma- kung, ano to, kung lalakihan mo yung budget ng isang isang politiko, may madideprive din ng budget. At sino yung madideprive ng budget? At sana punta yung 50 billion na nangangawa-ngawa pa si Paolo Duterte kasi hindi lang siya binigyan ng 2 billion. Kumbaga, na, nakat pa daw yung kanyang 2 billion budget. Di ba? Kumbaga, itong mga Duterte, these are self-entitled brats. Masyado silang self-entitled. Di ba? Uh, dito sa accusation, yung accusation ni Las Cañas napunta rin sa ICC. Kumbaga, uh, nagkaroon siya ng depositions and those depositions were submitted. Depositions, ito yung um, recorded testimony na kung sakaling mamamatay ka, di ba, ay napupreserve yan. At mag, kung kahit wala ka na, uh, that will still be accepted in the court of law as valid and authentic. Diba? So, ang dami yung mga allegations kay Duterte na ito, DDS hitman alleged Shabu Labs linked to Duterte claims former president is the dr- lord of all drug lords. Diba? Yung sinasabi niya na they even planned to assassinate former Senator Antonio Trillanes at papalabasin nilang parang um, nag-car accident yung kanyang pagkamatay. And also, ang dami. Yung mga napamatay na kung baga ang sabi niya is like collateral damage na namatay dahil sa kagaguhan nitong si Paolo Duterte. Diba? Ganun sila ka- kasiba. All right. And I don't, para sa Ilocano kasi, so nakikita ko talaga na, ano ba yung mga Chavit? The good thing about the, the Simpsons in Ilocos is that hanggang local politics na sila, they, they, you know, kahit sikat si Chavit dahil sa kanyang yate at mga yaman na, di ba, sa pagiging, sabi nila, dating imbalsamador, imposibleng 
makuha mo yung ganong yaman kahit politika lang yan, diba? galing sa politika lang itong pera. Kahit sabi natin naging businessman ka, hindi. Without the help of political money, Chavit would not have been able to you know, amass the, those great wealth. Diba? So anyways, nakikita ko yung, ano, yung, yung similarities ng politics sa Davao, saka sa Alucosur. Ang mga Marcoses, ito, si, si Digong, galit na galit. Kasi nga, di ba, gusto niya makabalik sa kapangyarihan kasi nga, this is all about an old man, you know, na nakakarma na. Alright? Kinakarma na siya. So dahil, nandyan na yung, kumbaga, maghuhukom sa kanya ang ICC. At, uh, it can be used by, you know, the Marcos administration to as leverage against the Duterte's. Pero, palaban din itong mga Duterte, no? 